Good evening. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Good evening, Brenda. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Fine, and you? Pretty well, thank you. How was your day? Um, okay. And tell me about the platform. Have you continued working? Um, I work in the platform for in, in stage section three. You're in section three, okay? Okay, you're good? Yes. Great. Good evening, Emma. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine. All right, that's nice. How was your day? I have a good day today. You had a good one, that's nice. I'm glad to hear it. Excuse me? I'm glad to hear that. Me alegra escucharlo. Okay. And, and the platform, Emma, have you been working on it? Uh, not yet, teacher. You haven't. Okay. What section are you in? Um, in the last knowledge check in the section two. Section two. Okay. Yes. All right. Just keep on working. Good evening, Ana Palma. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Great. How was your day? My day it was okay. All right, that's nice. Have you been working in the platform as well? Yes, I have. Okay, what section are you in? I complete all section, teacher. Oh, you're done with everything? Yes, I do. Oh, congratulations. That's such a good piece of news. Thank you. Okay, we're good. Jose Angel, good evening. Good evening, Ms. How are you? And the white teacher. All right. How was your day? Uh, okay, I am okay. All right. In the platform, Jose Angel, have you been completing the exercises? I started uh, section three. You're in section three already. Okay, nice. Keep going. Good evening, Maria del Rosario. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm very good. Okay, that's nice. And how was your day? I was very tired. Oh, it was a little tidy. Okay. In the platform, how are you doing with that? Uh, yes, I working in the platform. I I was uh, uh, finished the section three. You're done with that, okay? We're doing pretty well then. Yes. Nice. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Fabricio, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing? I'm fine, teacher. Okay, that's nice. Um, how was your day? Uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good day. It was a good one. Okay, I'm glad to hear it. And the platform, Fabricio, have you been completing the exercises? I not finish uh, section one. You finished uh, or you have yeah. not finished? No, no, not finished. No, no, not oh. finished. 
Okay. So just continue working. Remember that this week we have to complete all three sections. Oh, please continue working. Okay, teacher. Thanks. All right. Mauricio, good evening. Good night, Miss. How are you? I'm fine. And you? I'm very well, thanks. How was your day? Uh, very fine. Okay, that's nice. And the platform, Mauricio, have you been working on it? In section one, Miss Lily. You're still in section one, okay. All right, just remember to continue working, okay? Thank you. All right, Dennis Castro, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Fine, and you? Very well, thanks. How was your day? Okay. My day, oh, has very busy. Oh, it was busy, okay. Did you have any time to work in the platform? No. I'm going to in, in section 2.2. .2. All right, you're in section two. Okay, just remember to continue working. Okay. Good evening, Doris. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Pretty good, thanks. How was your day? It, my day was very well and busy. <laughs> oh yeah, I can imagine. And the platform, Doris, how are you doing with that? I, I'm working in the section number three. You're in section three, okay, very good. Good evening, Carlos René. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. And you? I'm very well, teacher. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. And the platform, Carlos, what can you tell me about that? I'm uh, finishing the section one. You're teacher. done with section one. Okay. Yes, teacher. All right. Just keep on working. Okay, teacher. Catherine, hello. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. All right. I'm glad to hear that. How was your day? Mm, more or less tired. Oh, okay. In the platform, Catherine, how are you doing with that? I think that I how do you say initiate? I started. I started in section three point one. Okay, you're in section three already. That's good. Yes. Dennis Manzano, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Um, I'm okay. Are you? Um, very good. Thanks. How was your day? Um, I had a good day. Okay. That's a good news. I did okay. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Did you have to work? Yes, I worked today, okay. every day. Yeah, every day, right. The adult life. <laughs> and the platform, Dennis? Yes, I was working on section two. You're in section two, okay. Yes. Good. Keep working then. All right, I think we're ready to start with our class. So let me just get this. And um, the first thing we're going to do today is, let me check this. Yeah, 
Yes, so we're going to start by working in the platform over here in exercise number, oh, let me see. One point fourteen. So there we have a little exercise to review the use of use two that we studied yesterday, right? So let me just get it. Okay. So here we have to choose the correct answer. Um. Here we have three different options. Did you use to did you used to worry about money when you were younger? Did you used to worry about money when you were younger? Or did you use did you used to about money when you were younger? Which one is correct? The first one, second one, or a third one? Second one. The second one, right? Because we are using did as an auxiliary, therefore we need just use in the base form, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the correct one. Now um, tell me the answer to that question, Isaac. Did you used to worry about money when you were younger? It's number two, miss. Which, yes. which is correct. Yes, that one is correct. So now I'm asking you, did you used to worry about money when you were younger? Uh, yes, answer the question. Is option one, you used it to worry about money when you were younger? No, Isaac, this one is correct. Now I want you to answer it. Eh, necesito que me responda esa pregunta. Oh, okay. So you tell me your answer. Did you used to worry about money when you were younger? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. And you can add some more information. Okay, sorry, teacher. Um, oh. Yes, I didn't. You did. Okay. Very good, thank you, Isaac. Emma, did you used to worry about money when you were younger? No, I don't. You didn't? No, I didn't, you said. I didn't, no, I didn't. Okay, that's nice. Jose Angel, did you used to worry about money when you were younger? No, I didn't. You didn't. Okay. All right, now let's move to question number two. We got three different options. Tell me which one is correct. Did you use to follow politics five years ago? Ago? Mm. Okay. The first one, right? Did you use to follow politics five years ago? Let's see, Ana Palma, did you used to follow politics five years ago? No, I didn't. You didn't, okay. Katherine, did you used to follow politics five years ago? Katherine Rodriguez. Sorry, teacher. No, I didn't. You didn't neither. Okay. Denis Castro, did you used to follow politics five years ago? No, I didn't. You didn't neither. Okay. Melvin, how about you? Did you used to follow politics five years ago? No, I didn't, teacher. You didn't. Okay. All right, in the next one, we have to choose the best question to match this answer. So the answer is, I used to care a lot about my appearance. Now I'm too busy to care how I look. What would be the question? 
the first, second, or third option? The first, second, yes, you. The first one? So if I say, yes, what did you used to care about when you were younger? You can answer that. Are you sure? Sure. Third. The third one, that's right. Did you use to, oh no, because here we have a, a mistake. Oh, mm -hmm. It should first. be use. What did you... No, but first. that one is the correct. Uh, there's a spelling mistake in the platform, but this one is the correct question. Si, sí, acá okay. el used no debería de ser en pasado, pero eh, esa debería de ser la, mm -hmm. la pregunta, porque mm -hmm. es lógica, right? So we have, did you used to care about your appearance? I used to care a lot about my appearance. Now I'm too busy to care how I look. Okay, next one. Complete the question. What kind of video games? Did you used to play when you were a teenager? Did you used to play when you were a teenager? That's right. So let me ask Dennis Manzano, what kind of video games did you used to play when you were a teenager? Dennis? Hola. What kind of video games did you used to play when you were a teenager? Any answer? I don't know what to say. Okay, so did you use? <laughs> okay, don't worry. So the question is, ¿qué tipo de videojuegos le gustaba jugar o solía jugar cuando era un adolescente? Mm. Did you used to play I... video games? Yes, I did. Okay, so what kind of video games? I used to play. I used to play. Como, what did you say? Juego de pelea. <laughs> oh, fighting. Uh, fighting games? Fighter okay. games. Fighting. Mm -hmm. All right. Fighter. Fighting. Fighting. Okay. Yeah, remember that this is the word. Fight, then fighting games. I used to play fighting games. Okay. All right, interesting. Okay, so about today's lesson objective. So we are going to learn how to describe problems in English using count and non-count nouns. By the end of this class, you learn how to describe problems in a city using phrases like too many, too much, less, fewer, enough, and more. And you'll also learn about <clears throat> common non-count non nouns, including water, Oxygen, English, traffic, milk, soccer, sunshine, etc. And understand how to tell if a noun if a noun is count or non-count. An English oral comprehension audio exercise is also included in this section. So let's take a look at it. Let's see. So here we're going to watch the video and we're going to get the explanation for count and non-count nouns. I need you all to pay attention, please.
whether it denounce that I'm using, whether it count or non count. By the end of this class, you'll be able to describe problems in a city. You'll do this by using count and non count nouns. Let me give you a quick example of this. There's too much traffic in my city because there are too many cars. You'll also listen to an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. First of all, nouns. What are nouns? Well, nouns are people, places, or things. Pretty much everything that you see around you is considered a noun. And what do we mean by count nouns? Well, count nouns are simply all of those things, people, places, or things that you can easily count. So for example, when we think about cars, subway lanes, buses, those are nouns that you can easily count. Let me give you an example of other nouns that we can easily count. For example, we can count things like a pen, a computer, a bottle, a spoon, a desk, a cup, a television, a chair, shoe, a finger, flower, camera, stick, balloon, book, table, etc. Another thing that I would like to mention about count nouns is that we can easily change these count nouns into plurals by simply adding an S. Now let me point out what non count nouns are. And just like I mentioned previously, count nouns are all of those things that you can count. People, places, or things that are easy to count, such as cars, subway lanes, or buses, like we see on the example. Now, with non count nouns, what that means is that we're going to look at nouns that are difficult to count. So, for example, in our chart, we see things like traffic, things like pollution, public transportation parking. Those are a little bit difficult to count. So let me give you more examples of some of the things that cannot be counted quite easily and therefore we consider this non-count nouns. So if we think about things like water, wood, ice, air, oxygen, English, Spanish, these are subjects, traffic, furniture, milk, wine, sugar, rice, meat, flower, things like sports, soccer. All of these things are non-countable. They cannot be counted easily. Another thing that's important to mention about non-count nouns is that we don't add an S in order to ch change them to plural. They, they do not have a plural form. Next, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program for you so that you can listen to the perspective of some people about their city and remember that the goal of this class is to learn how to express problems that exist within a city. For example, there's too much traffic in my city because there are too many cars. And we want to use count nouns and non-count nouns to express uh, those ideas. So we're going to listen to that and I will have you answer a couple of questions about that. The buses are old and slow, and they cause too much pollution. In cities with less pollution, people are healthier. There are too many cars. All the cars, taxis, and buses are a danger to bicyclists. There is too much traffic. There should be fewer cars, but I think that the biggest problem is parking. There just isn't enough parking. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to answer some questions about your city. And what I would like for you to do is to tell me Okay, so let's let's talk about the count and non-count nouns. So as you see, the names indicate that we're talking about things that can be counted and things that cannot be counted, right? And then another thing to keep in mind about the count nouns is that they have a singular in a plural form. For example, in, when we talk about apples, we got the singular apple, then we add an S and it becomes plural apples.
that is something that doesn't happen with the known count nouns. They only have a singular form. For example, when we talk about traffic, there's no way to say that there are traffics or something like that, right? That doesn't exist. Or we cannot say uh, music. That, that word is just incorrect, right? We only have a singular form. Then we also have some different adverbs of quantity or quantifiers that we can use with the different kinds of nouns. For the count nouns, we get many, too many, few, and a few. Also, we could use the, compar the comparative fewer. And in the case of non count nouns, we got much, too much, and a little. So notice that they change, right? For count nouns, we got many. For non count, much. And also we got few for the count nouns and a little for the non count. Then we also have some other ad adverbs of quantity that we can use for both count and non count. For example, enough, some, more, a lot of, or lots of, and any. Those ones can be used with both count and non count. And at last here, I have some examples of count nouns. Example, apples, desks, cups, pencils. Those are things that we can count. And for the noun count nouns, we get traffic, music, water, use, love. So tell me some other examples. What are some other count nouns that you know? Car. Cars. TV. TV, okay. Tables. Yes. Buses. What is it? Buses. Buses. Buses, dolls, dolls, okay. Any other thing you can count? Towers. Sorry, can you repeat it? House. Yes, house or houses. Mm -hmm. Fruits. Fruits. Okay, let's just keep it um, like that. All right, now tell me about some other non count nouns that you know. Hey. What? Hey. Care. Huh? Sand. Sand. Salt. 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 Okay. Oil. What's the other one? Sugar. 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 Air. 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 Milk. Milk. Coffee. Coffee. Any others? Rice. Rice. Salt. What is it? Salt. 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 We already have it here. Oh, salt. Mm -hmm. Time. Time. That's right. Okay, let's keep it till there. Okay, are we clear about the idea behind count and non-count nouns? Do we have any questions, any doubts? No questions? No, teacher. No. Okay, yes. so tell me. Okay, so now I need you to share 
um, the answer to this question. I need you to think about the things that you have in your fridge and tell us. I mean, you say, for example, in my fridge, there is a lot of water. There are a few apples. There are, um, let's say, um, a few bottles of milk and so on. So just name what you have in your fridge. Let me ask Fabricio, what's in your fridge? In my fridge, uh, are was what? five juice of apple. There is apple juice. Apple juice. Okay, what else? I a lot of a few uh, milk. A little milk. Yeah, a little milk. Okay. And for sharing, and let's see, Anna. Okay, Anna Palma. What's in your fridge? Ana Palma, are you there? Okay, how about Maria del Rosario? What's in your fridge? In my fridge, um, fridge there are um, there are much milk. There is much milk. Okay, what else? There is a little egg. There are a few eggs, you see. What else, Maria Rosario? There are, there are more oil. There is much oil, okay. Thanks for sharing. And let me just clarify something about this. So we use there is for the singular nouns. We use there is for the singular account nouns and also for the non count nouns. So for example, when talking about um, bananas, if I only have one banana, I say there is one banana, there is. So that one is a count noun, a singular count noun. And then if I'm talking about things like use, I also use there is because they are non count. There is use, there is some use or there is much use. There's a little use. And then we have there are, which we use for plural count nouns only. So just keep that in mind. For non count nouns, we only use there is. And for count nouns, we get there are when they are in plural. So just be careful with that. And also remember the difference in the uh, quantifiers, right? We got many for the count nouns, much for the known count. So maybe we should practice a little bit about that. Let me, let me just go back. So here, many is for count, much for known count. Let's try by making some examples. Teacher, tell me. I'm sorry for not participating because I had a problem oh, with the okay. platform. Okay, don't worry, there's no problem. Okay. 
So for example, here with the count nouns, we could say there are many eggs. There are many eggs. Now let's make a sentence using much. Can you tell me what? There is a little traffic. There is a little traffic, okay. Make another one using much, please. So we say there is much. There is too much pollution. Much pollution. And yes, we could also say too much. Too much pollution. Okay. Now make one using few or a few. I have a question. Tell me. Where can I use the word some? Oh, okay. Just give me a second. I'll finish with this example and then I'll give you some other examples using some, okay? Okay. All right. So here we have, there are a few, let's say onions. So you see the difference. Over here we say there are many X because X is count. But then we say there is too much pollution because pollution is non-count. So you use much and not many, okay? And the same happens with a few and a little. There are a few onions, onions is count. Therefore I need a few. In the case of traffic, I say a little traffic because it's known count. There is a little traffic. And now with some, you could say there are some bananas in the fridge. Also, we could make a sentence like there is some tea in the cup. There is some tea. Let's see, another one could be, there is some soup in the bowl. There you are, Dennis, we have some examples. Dennis Manzano or Dennis Castro? Oh, Dennis Manzano asked, I think. Okay. Can I use with R and is? Mm -hmm. oh. Exactly. That one can be used with both count and non count nouns. So it could be with there are or there is. Okay. All right. Do we have any other Dennis questions? And then, oh, there's also important to know that. We use some in the affirmative, but in the negative, we use any. For example, here we say there are some bananas in the fridge, but if we change it to the negative, we should say, let me just write over here. There are any. There aren't any. Mm -hmm. Any bananas in the fridge. And the same happens in the other cases. There is some tea in the cup. There isn't any tea in the cup. There is some soup in the bowl. There isn't any soup in the bowl. So just keep that in mind. Okay, do we have any questions about this? Maybe not. Okay, so let's continue practicing with this question. Mauricio, what's in your fridge? Mauricio Stanley. In my fridge, uh, I have pears. Okay. Orange. Oranges. Potato. Okay. And soda. Meal and juice. All right. 
Thanks for sharing, Mauricio. Brenda Calderon, what's in your fridge? In my fridge, I have a... Um, Try to use there mm. is and there are, please. All right, there, there is... Um, there are my, uh, apples and some bananas and much milk. There is much milk. All right. Thanks for sharing, Brenda. Alma Joanna, what's in your fridge? In my fridge, I have. Use a there few is apples. and there are, please. So there are a few apples. What else? There are there are some few apples and some juice. There is some juice. Some bottle juice. Okay. Some bottle juice and That's and it. a lot of okay a lot of beans there are a lot of beans okay all right very good now let's talk about cities in the countryside so we're going to just go to the breakout rooms and work in small groups we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of living in the city or living in the countryside so you could say, for example, in the cities, there is much pollution. In the countryside, there is fresh air, for instance, and so on. So make a comparison of the cities and the countryside. Let me send you to breakout rooms right now. There you go. I am okay, and you? I'm fine. What are you talking about is the exercise. I... No. No, no entendí mucho con qué qué vamos a hacer. Okay. Is he talking about this uh, in the example, the exercise? This uh, when you do when you have the fridge, and ah. what is the how this the in the city? Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of cities in the countryside. So you could think about the good things uh, about cities and the bad things about them. And the same goes for the countryside. Okay, thanks, okay. Miss. All right, for example, you could say um, in the cities, there is a lot of traffic. In the countryside, there are a lot of, let's say animals, for instance, I mean, just think about the advantages and the disadvantages, ventajas y desventajas de las ciudades y del eh, countryside, del, what is it, campo. Is it okay. now? Is the any, any country teacher or only El Salvador? Oh no, by countryside we mean campo. 
um, okay. cities, ciudades, ah, okay. y el countryside yeah. sería el, sí, el campo lo llamamos, ¿verdad? Como fuera de la ciudad. Rural, muy rural. Exact Ajá. Exactamente. Okay. Ajá. ok. For example, in the... Uh, there are much insects. Yeah. In the city, uh, there are many houses. In the countryside, uh, there are there. There are many trees. Yes. Correct. Oh, there in, are in, in, people? Yeah, a lot of people. In the city, uh, there, there are a, a lot, um, a lot of uh, stores. In the city, there are, there are a lot of stores. In the country, there aren't any stores or a few stores. Mm, yeah. In the country, they are um, no, they are. Uh, there are, <laughs> there there are, are. many. Um, Hi. Hi Daisy and Doris, how are you doing? Uh, what advance in the cities is that everything is near? Um, it's okay? The advantages, that means the good things about the cities or the countryside. Advantages and disadvantages, ventajas y desventajas. Uh -huh. Yo intenté poner una ventaja de la ciudad es que todo está cerca. Ok. One advantage in the cities is that everything is near. That's right. One this, one this ad, advantages is of the city is there is a lot of traffic. Yes, that's good. Only, only that. In Doris, are you there? Maybe Doris is having trouble. Okay, so Daisy, I'm sending you to another group. La voy a agregar a otro grupo para que trabaje con otros compañeros, okay? Perfect. Oh, let me send you. that this city is dangerous but yeah 
Yes. Two place, two place. There is for me. Is, there is dangerous, but uh, for the people living the, in that place, is safe or quiet because uh, you got up, you got up there. I think. Because you say no, it's, it's no dangerous. It's safe because you you grew up there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yes. I don't know what question. What question make? No, 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 no te escuché bien. Hola. No, no, no te escuché bien. Sí, se escucha. Ah, sí, ahorita sí. Excelente. One advantage in the cities is that everything is near. Mm. And one disadvantage of the city. All right, so let me hear some of the advantages and disadvantages of cities. Let's see. Ana Palma, can you tell me an advantage or disadvantage about a city? Um, to share uh, for me, the advantages and disadvantages at the city, in the city, there is more pollution, there are many cars. And the advantage, uh, the, there, are, there are some supermarkets, and there are um, near the banks, the banks. Okay. But for my, for my partner, um, they grew up on the city, they, all is okay. But for me, I, I, I grew up um, in the camp or out the city. For me, it's, it's different. Um, okay. Because when, where, where I live, it's more, more, more quiet, more, more safe, the, uh, the, the air, is is more is more clean okay. than than the than the city. All right, excellent, Anna. Thanks for comparing both the cities and the countryside. Jose Hernandez, what can you tell us about the advantages and disadvantages of cities and the countryside? The city is much traffic, in the countryside light traffic. In the city is much uh, dangerous, and the countryside very dangerous. In the city is, is much smoke. Yes, contamination. Sí. Yes, there is much smoke or okay. pollution. The countryside is a uh, uh, poor, poor air. Okay. Only this. 
All right, thanks for sharing, Jose. Let me ask another person. Let's see, that would be Brenda Calderon. What can you tell us about cities in the countryside? In the city, there are many cars. In the countryside, uh, little cars. And the city, uh, there are uh, many houses. And the country, there are many trees. Um, and the city, um, there are uh, much uh, noise. There's not in noise. The <laughs> in the countryside, uh, there is the most uh, silence. Silence. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Denis Castro, what can you tell us about the cities in the countryside? Um, okay. In the city, there are many stores. There are many stores. There are, okay. There are many supermarket or I don't know, many uh, restaurants. Yep. Uh, in the countryside, uh, there are or less, less restaurant, less, less, um, less stores. Okay. But but there there is fresh air. Yep. And there there are more silent. There's more sil more silence. Okay. Very good. Thanks for sharing. Okay. All right, so in the remaining couple of minutes, I want you to open the chat, please. Everybody open the chat. And we're going to make some sentences using the different adverbs of quantity. So let's start by making an example using many. So please, everybody write your example using many in there is or there are. So you write a sentence and you send it in the chat. There are many buildings. Very good, Denis Castro. Brenda says in the city, there are many cars. Okay. Catherine says there are many eggs. Okay. Melvin, there are many buses. Just change that, please. Buses. Fabricio, in the city, there is more traffic and polluted air. Okay. In the city, there are many streets, says Isaac. Okay. All right, how about now we make a sentence using much? There are many people, okay. Now use much in a sentence. Okay, so Denis Castro, you say there is much noise. There is much, much noise. Anna says, in the city, there are many parks. And also remember that whenever you use there are, you need the plural noun, okay? Cuando utilizamos there are, tenemos que utilizar el plural. There are many parks. Brenda Calderon says, in the fridge, there is much milk. Okay, now try using a few or few. Mm -hmm. 
make sentences using a few or few. Okay, Jose Angel, in that case, you need to say a little. There is a little traffic. Because remember that traffic is non count. We use few and a few for count nouns, okay? There are a few policemen, okay? There are a few cars. Very good, there are a few cows, nice. Now let's try to use a little in sentences, a little. In the city, there are a few animals, okay. There are a few dogs, very good. Now make sentences using a little. Brenda says there's a little cheese, okay. There's a little car, okay. Any other example? There is a little traffic, we say, Melvin. Okay. So we're going to finish our class over here. So thank you very much for participating. Take care, sleep well, have a good night. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Chair. Good night. Bye, good night. Good